So this interview is brought to you by Burn It Up Coaching. And Burn It Up Coaching is doing the 21-day challenge right now. And if you are interested in really taking your life to the next level, your, your success, your performance, your ability to sell, your ability to produce results, hold yourself accountable, and actually break through that which has been stopping you, or if you're vaguely dissatisfied, you're vaguely unclear on what it is that you really, really want in life and you just want that reignition of passion and self-belief and energy in your life, the clarity to go after your goals, then the 21-day challenge might be for you. Over the course of 21 days, you'll set a single-minded focused target and you will have daily support and daily check-ins to achieve that as well as weekly deep dive calls, coaching calls to be able to uncover the limiting beliefs and the things that are keeping you stuck, stopped, and stalled. So that's what we do in the 21-day challenge. It is not for everyone. It is a very intense program and if you're up for the intensity, then send me a message and I'll send you over the intake form and we'll see if it's a good fit for you. Again, it's not for everyone, but if you're ready to take your life to the next level, I would love to have a conversation with you and see if that's a good fit. Now, this interview is also brought to you by our podcast uh, reviews. And if you haven't done that yet, go to beyourgps.com forward slash iTunes and you can give us a review there or search becoming your greatest possible self on iTunes and do that there. Rico Caveglia says, I love Chris's title and subject. One of the biggest challenges we have as a humanity is lack of expectation of what is possible. Is a lack of expectation of what is possible. All of his podcasts are exactly about how to become your greatest possible self because that's why you're here and because you can. Great stuff. Thank you. So thanks, Rico. And again, if you want to give us one, go ahead and head over to beyourgps.com forward slash iTunes, and you can leave us a review there or send me a message and just give us the feedback. Always, always appreciated. Now for the man of the hour, Eddie Lauren. Over the past 30 years, Eddie Lauren has successfully purchased and transformed three billion dollars worth of multifamily, multifamily real estate, acting as either principal or advisor, amounting to more than 180 thriving communities covering approximately 40,000 apartment units throughout the United States, led by the belief that housing that's affordable should be every person's right rather than a privilege, Eddie has made it his life's mission to fix the housing affordability crisis in America and to make safe quality housing, and community support available and affordable for all. His newest venture and investment opportunity, ImpactHousing.com, is designed to do just that. And the perfect marriage of impact investing and multifamily real estate, providing a triple bottom line, financial, environmental, and social returns to investors. The fund is expected to, deliver, to deliver market rate returns to investors while providing more affordable, better quality housing to those who need it most. With his wife, Eddie co-founded the Healthy Apartment Pro Property Initiative, a 501c3 nonprofit back in 2015 to provide free on-site social health and wellness programming right to the doorsteps of residents and families living in our apartment communities. Eddie, you are you ready to rock this man? <laughs> Absolutely. You make me sound old. You are an incredible human being, man. <laughs> You're rocking it, creating so many results in the world. Thank you for what you do, and thank you for coming on our show to share with our audience about the wisdom that you've gained and what you're up to in the world. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. So let's dive right into the theme of the day, which is, um, what is it? What would it be like if? So the theme of today is, what would it be like if? Almost this, this mindset of possibility, this energy of possibility. How has that impacted your life, Eddie? This conversation of possibility, this conversation of what would it be like if, dot, dot, dot. Well, I've always lived my life because I came from very modest means. Act as if hmm. was always my, my suffix, so to speak. So uh, act as if you were successful. Act as if you're able to change the world. And lo and behold, you can. So uh, persistence is everything. I never, never give up. My wife makes fun of me because she says, my God, you really never give up in all levels. Believe me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. So it's like that principled stand. Who you are is what you believe in, your your values, your stand for those values. That's right. You yeah. got to keep on living. That's what they say. Just keep on living every day. You That's know, right. let That's go right. and let it happen. And 
as much as you want to control things, it's not so easy and you just got to let it all go. Mm, beautiful. I'm sure we'll be getting into specific examples of how to do that. But before we go any further, I, I mentioned some things that you're working on today. In your own words, for anyone who's hearing you for the first time or getting to know you more, why don't you share a little bit more about yourself and, and who you are? I am just a basic guy trying to provide the most important thing we all need in this country, and that's a clean, safe, affordable place to live. Hmm. We treat people with respect and dignity. They stay, they pay, they refer their friends. It's a very boring business, but it's a very rewarding one. Hmm. It's really important that everybody has the right, as you said, to live in good, safe housing. The old adage, you can be poor, but you gotta be clean. If you have pride, God helps those who helps themselves, so to speak. So it's really important that everyone and every, you know, and, and anyone can really just get what they need if they put forth their own effort. So we all work together. They pay and they put together their, you know, they live in a great place that we provide and we give them that same respect back. And that's all that works. Wow. So you, you're operating on a couple different philosophies and philanthropy and really just benefiting society and also making a great profit in the process. But I'm sure you weren't always this awesome of a guy and, you know, thriving. Oh, I and... used to be a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do want to know, like, what was that journey like? I mean, you said you came from modest means. So let's take us back okay. there. And, All right. And well, my father died. I'm 10 months. My mother died. I'm 17. Put myself through UCLA, through the deepest, darkest depression and despair, I fought through and got all the help I needed to at least be functioning, graduate, get a good job, find a lovely wife. I got married. I had two beautiful daughters, and I would consider that the most successful thing. The money has nothing really to do with it. More important. I was able to come from the depths of despair and really come out okay and be a happy, thriving person, which is the most important thing. Because if you're not happy and deep in your heart and not happy with who you are, comfortable in your own skin, mm. you can't be successful. Mm. What kind of mindset shifts occurred during that, that period of time? You thought it was about the money. You came from this, this place of depression. You know, how, did you, how did you grow through that? Well, that's a great question. We just get up every day mm -hmm. and try to do the best you can and not try to compare yourself to others because that was, I think I finally matured after 52 years to a place where I don't care. Mm. And that's a really hard place to get to. But I'd look around and say, oh, this one has this and that one has that. Mm -hmm. I wish I had this. Why are life's not fair? You know, why, why am I so cursed? All this crap which is what we all do to ourselves. We're all our own worst enemy. And to the extent we can heal and just be kinder to ourselves and let life flow and get out of our own way, it's a much, much better place to be. Hmm. Beautiful. What would you say led to your perseverance, your ability to persevere through the challenging times? I don't know. I just get up every day and I keep fighting. I'm like, I put on my helmet and I'm a bulldog. Mm. And I don't know. I don't know if that's innate or it, it, you can create it. My gut is that's probably who I am. I'm just a fighter. Yeah, well, I think everyone is dealt circum circumstances and certain things in their life. And you were dealt some pretty, pretty challenging blows before you were 18 years old. So you had to show up as a provider, as a responsible adult or else you're done, you know? Yeah, I guess I don't know. It's is it nature versus nurture that we when you when you have children, it even makes it worse because you actually think as you see these kids, they are who they are, and as much as you can raise two kids the exact same, they end up so different. So, really, <laughs> what was all that parenting for? <laughs> <laughs> did what I do did nothing? Did it did it mean nothing? <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh. So you you raise these kids and you have an amazing wife. What, what kind of growth did you experience in your, your business? What kind of lessons did you experience on that path? Well, daily. Yeah. There's always there's always lessons to be learned. 
was learning, you know, I, I, I tended to be a little too soft mm. in my earlier years because I was sensitive and tried to please everybody. Mm. Sound familiar, you mm -hmm. know? And the more you mature, the less you need to please everybody. And the more you can focus on what is right is right and what's wrong is nowhere. Mm. But you can't try to please everybody and try to make things right. They right. either are or they aren't, and it only comes from time and experience and wisdom and all those frustrating things that we have to grow and learn and, mm. and persevere through. And that's the sad part because you wish you could just snap your fingers and have all the wisdom, but you really can't. <laughs> and you can't rush it. And as much as I tried to rush it, trying to run away from all of my fears, inhibitions, all these things to prove to the world that I'm successful and who the hell cares mm. at this point you have enough every day you get up you got two legs two arms mm. two ears yeah i mean it's really that basic but you don't realize it until you do a lot of soul searching and a lot of maturing yeah there's no other explanation for is there a way like I want to I want to understand the, the mechanism that's going on of maturation, maturation, how do you say it? Um, and the mechanism that's going on with getting the wisdom and the experience so that we can almost like as a, in, a, in a laboratory, be able to create that ourselves, be able to ignite that, be able to create our own catalysts. Do you have any ideas on how we can do that? I do. But I don't know if it's a result of me being older and mature or it just worked mm -hmm. because, you know, there's a concept called Musar, M-U-S-S-A-R. I happen to be Jewish. Mm -hmm. Funny, I don't look Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> and that there's a there's a study that's really not about Moses part of the Red Sea. It's really about character traits. So mm -hmm. the first character trait is cleanliness. Mm -hmm. the next one is order. If you're not in order, you can't solve what is before you. Mm. And then there's patience and there's diligence and there's frugality. And there's these 18 character traits, which wow. we've been studying. My wife and I was our empty nest because my daughters are both off in college. One's at SC and USC, not Southern California, South Carolina, <laughs> but Southern California. Right. And the other one's at Tulane University. I'm very proud of them. Mm. Um, but the point is, we had an empty nest thing we were going to do together, kind of a spiritual thing, and that's what we did. We took these classes, and over the last year, I think it all synthesized for me. But I don't know whether I needed to go through 30 years of hell to become an overnight success, right? Or um, it was really helpful to have taken that earlier. I, I don't know the answer, whether it's experience that – all comes in a culmination and you just finally see the catalyst. But if you want to expedite or push it along, I think these character traits are really good to study in depth and there's a lot of meaning in it and it just causes you to stop and pause. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's all we need to digest what's about to happen and unfold before us. You know, the more you live, the less you know. <laughs> oh my gosh that's like the the less you you realize you know like it's yeah, well, the one thing that i know is that i know nothing <laughs> and when you realize that you're all right the ego's gone i love it and so the, those 18 uh virtues values that's the musar yeah they're actually character traits they're character they're traits. not even virtues they really are traits that you work on you try to study and absorb what it means to be clean, mm -hmm. but not overly clean, because then you're too focused on yourself. So mm -hmm. it's about focusing on the other person, yet protecting yourself. Mm -hmm. And it's been very meaningful for me. And it's not a lot of hocus pocus. Mm -hmm. Anybody can just find it online and do it. But you have to spend the time to research in the depths of your own psyche yeah. and see what's good. So it's good to do with someone else, obviously. But mm -hmm. It is something that I think has been kind of life-changing for me. Hmm. 
It's beautiful, man. And what I hear is one, it's like the basics, it's the fundamentals, it's characteristics, character traits, which everyone has. Everyone can access these. Um, it's not, you know, hocus pocus. It's not woo woo. It's not like esoteric theory. It's like, hey, this is tangible stuff. Like, how are you performing in this? <laughs> so that's number one. And then what I also hear that I know for me is you have your wife as an accountability partner, you know, mirror kind of kind of uh, feedback system. So you guys are able to meditate on these concepts and further integrate them into life. And how does it apply? How does it work? How do we really maximize the usage of this? Oh, yeah. Remember last week when that happened? If we would have applied this then, then it would have made the difference. And for me, I mean, now it's daily. You right. Know? You right. Pissed off at someone. Remember your Musar. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it's, it's like top of mind. How do we keep things top of mind, whether it's the Musar or, you know, it's it's something else. It's some other, you know, uh, system or or philosophy about life, how to show up in life. Either way, it's I think a big factor is how top of mind is something and then how much are we able to dialogue about it and meditate on it so that it, it becomes a fluent part of our vocabulary of this this is like this is a part of me i'm ingraining it i'm integrating it cuz a lot of people just read or they just like go to a seminar or they listen to a podcast but they don't integrate they don't yeah, uh, you know repeat yeah absorb it yeah wow. so that's that's awesome that's a good good uh, insight so as far as the the business that you created tell us about how that how that was born how did you discover doing that doing so many real estate deals and just like becoming a powerhouse in real estate well, I've always had vision mm -hmm. that I think is a gift also. Mm -hmm. Is it innate or is it not? I think <laughs> I do. I can see a building. I can see a property and tr see how I can transform it. So mm -hmm. I love to make blight, I say, into light. Mm -hmm. So the more screwed up, the better. Because, you know, go where they ain't. That's where you get it. You, you know, otherwise, any schmuck can buy a building. Right. No, you got to what, what can you add? I can mm. add value by giving people all the things we talked about. Mm. So we start with a sign. And when someone drives by our building, I want the sign to look so good that they only wish they could afford to live there. Mm. And lo and behold, they go inside and they can. It's beautifully painted, a resort style pool, state of the art fitness center, outdoor fitness equipment, um, really nice landscaping. Then you go into the units and they're really tasteful and they're clean and they're mm. reasonable and the price is right. And all these things are what we strive for. And we've become pretty good at this kind of a value add strategy, having vision. So it just evolved over time. And you learn what not to do and what to do. And, you know, we make mistakes. But, you know, you come up with a formula and that's how you become successful, doing the same thing over and over again. Hmm. So, Eddie, this is a, a personal question. You are like no nonsense guy and you just give it straight. <laughs> I'm curious, how do you find people react and resonate with your uh, wisdom, mentorship and coaching? Well, it depends on the personality. <laughs> if you're not a strong personality and you probably will crumble. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, you know, I just spoke in front of 350 people yesterday on wow. uh, thing, and there was I got a lot of great comments and a lot of questions and people seem to react well. And if they don't, what can I do? <laughs> You're just being you, man. <laughs> uh, you know, it's a lot easier than trying to be someone else. And mm. that's really, you got to be your authentic self. And mm. that's part of growing up and maturing. Like this. earlier, I would say, well, this one has this, this one has that. Maybe I should be more like this. And it's like, you know what? Stop running from yourself. Mm. And just to, appreciate and embrace it wow that's good stop running from yourself that's powerful so in in terms of when you're on stage speaking what what is your what is your usual like outcome how do you how do you know what you're going to say how do you know uh, what you want to get or achieve with the audience well my crusade is to make sure that the underdog gets protection so whatever it's about, the same theme resonates. I don't really have to prepare to speak. Mm. I just speak because I know what I'm doing. Mm. I've done it well for many years. I read, I learn, I grow. I'm on a panel. I give my input when I have something to say. And if not, I want to listen and learn from others. Mm. 
So it's really about the general theme of giving people that and a great place to live, treat them with respect and dignity. All those things are who I am as a human being. Hmm. So that's just the overriding message that I convey and whatever topic happens to be what I'm talking about. Hmm. Now, some like, I'm not going to talk about stuff I don't know. No. So I just talk about affordable housing. I talk about this new concept of opportunity zones, which are low income areas that are going to be a tax treated a benefit for really rich people, which is really cool to take $6 trillion on the sidelines of pent up gains and put them into distressed communities. I wrote an article in Forbes on that. So I know one one, anyone wants to Google Eddie Lauren Forbes, you can see that. Um, it's all about that underdog, the, just giving those people who potentially have one foot on a banana peel, mm. one paycheck away, that really great place to live that they can afford. And I'm trying to work on innovative concepts. I just created the first NOAA property in Los Angeles, which is naturally occurring affordable housing, which is taking old product and deeming it affordable and supplying it for supportive and homelessness mm. and uh, doing it in a way that's still transitional housing. It's not the mentally ill who are on the streets talking to themselves. These are <laughs> people that, you know, half of the homeless people in Los Angeles and probably in the whole country happen to just be homeless because they can't afford to pay their rent anymore. Mm. It's very basic. And we need to all gather together. So my, like I said, my crusade is to go speak to foundations and governments and say, hey, how can we all combine public-private foundation partnerships to help solve the problem? Even if it's two or $300 a month for each person who can't afford that because they can't afford the extra rent. These are, the, these are the things I talk about every day. It's just who I am. So I don't have to prepare. I'm just do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. I do. And what would you say gave you this such a good natured spirit? I had a great mother. I did for the 17 years I had her. She instilled in me the, really the all the character traits that I think were already there. Hmm. Nurture, you know, versus the nature. I, you know, I, I struggle with it still. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's 70-30 some days and the other days it might be 70-30 the other way. But hmm. I think I learned a tremendous amount. I'm very blessed. I had three older brothers who did help me and guide me and I've always searched for mentors hmm. throughout my life. If I didn't know something, I'd go ask them and say, you know, I need your advice, not I need your money. I need your advice. Can you help me? And if that leads to something else, it was really meant to be. And if not, so be it. So I just think that that is the most important thing. Hmm. What did you look for when you were looking for mentors? People who had done cool things that I respected, hmm. you know, um, in, in real estate primarily. Hmm. Uh, just looked for, say, I want to be like them, you know, and that's where you get into the, oh, I'm not there yet. So you got to be careful when you're looking for mentors that you're looking to learn and you realize you're 25 at that time and they're 50. You're not hmm. supposed to be there. <laughs> You know, yeah. these basics are so obvious, but, you know, until you look inward and understand where you're coming from, you don't realize that you expect to be there. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Does that make sense? It does. It does. Okay. I had a question about investing um, in, in terms of your biggest lessons or, you know, in, in terms of building wealth do you have any recommendations or, or lessons wisdom that you would give our audience so that we can have that in, investor mindset build wealth and be able to to create more time and money freedom always trust your gut hmm. do your research study diligence but at the end of the day do i trust this person does this make common sense do i believe this is going to make money Hmm. that's it some of the wealthiest people are the most basic hmm. we all are too smart for ourselves talk ourselves right out of the order here's a funny story my grandfather-in-law he says if you're a salesman you gotta make sure 
that you get your order and you get the F out of there. So many <laughs> salesmen talk themselves right out of the order. You get out of there. <laughs> Stay silent. Learn when to shut up. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I heard something. Uh, be brief. Be brilliant. Be gone. <laughs> Same concept. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, when, you, so, when you're looking at investments, it's got to make sense. It's got to mm, feel right. Mm. Is there anyone you wouldn't um, allow to to invest into you? Is there any any like quality or caliber of people, any type of people who you you wouldn't want to invest into your properties or the things that you're working on? That's a loaded question. <laughs> there are many people who have wronged me, taken advantage of me. Mm. And like I said, I was always really nice and pretty naive. Mm. I wish I could turn back time and not do business with them. But here's the wisdom again. That gut. You can only get that gut from experience. So I'll know and smell when those people come around again. And I'm not going to make that mistake again because I'm aware. But you can't, you can't replace that experience. That's the problem. That's why it's really hard to be young. Mm. And then you get old and wise and you're tired. <laughs> you up so much and your teeth have been kicked in. You know what I mean? Yes. That's the problem. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's that's such great wisdom, though. It's like you it's know, it, it's it's hard to be young because you're you're naive. <laughs> you just don't have that experience. We don't have that that wisdom. And when you're older, then it's like you don't have as much energy or whatever, and you have to be you get to be even more wise with your with your time. I'm jaded. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that also serves you in making smart decisions. Or, or or missing opportunities because you're too jaded. So it depends mm. how old you are. Or how old <laughs> you are in, in, in not necessarily physically, but right. emotionally old. Mm. Some people are just done. It's just enough. Jesus. Mm. Business is hard, you know, and the craziness and just closing a deal. I closed a deal today and it's like, are you kidding? The last minute, everybody has to wait the last minute because you're doing something else. If you just anticipate, we wouldn't have this problem. And why is your stress put on me? Mm. already we showed up mm. what can you do that's the problem you have to deal with people <laughs> i love it so you you mentioned like as as time goes on you know emotionally we we might we age we get more experience do you do you see that decreasing the likelihood that you will enjoy business as much or do it for as long like actively and you know putting all your energy into it well it's still fun now and I still love to transform communities and make people money and make myself money and mm -hmm. make a difference in society. So my, my goals have changed from money to more benevolence and charity and doing the right thing and making a difference in a legacy, which is mm -hmm. normal mm -hmm. as you get older. Mm -hmm. But if you're just trying to freaking feed your family, that's one thing. You can't mm -hmm. be very philanthropic. Mm -hmm. You're going to just duke it out and fight. But as time goes on and things get more mature and established, then you can be more philanthropic. That's why it's hard to be young. And, you know, especially like if you're a wealthy kid and you've inherited this and you're supposed you're you're looked upon as, you know, like prey by people mm -hmm. to get money or to get investment or to get um, involvement. It's really hard because you don't have the experience mm -hmm. and you can easily be taken advantage of. So you got to find, if you are in that position, you got to find the right people, the right stewards of capital, the right trustees, the right people who have a good heart that aren't going to take advantage. It's just, I don't know why I went to that, but that comes That's great. It's great. How do you, how do you find those people? How do you know? I know it's like, we talked about gut and it's common sense. Probably you're going to say something like that. No, it's, well, it's networking. It's, it's, mm. it's, it's reaching out or it's, if you see someone on TV that or something that is in a some kind of an interview that kind of resonates with you, people reach out to me all the time. They mm. say, hey, I like what you said. You mind help me? I said, sure. Anybody ask me to help, I help. That's my job in life. We all have to pass it forward. Not everybody's like that, but I try my best. And um, 
you never know. So you just got to be kind and good to everyone and be helpful. And hopefully it all comes in the karma of the universe. How do you see the evolution of technology impacting what you do? Well, it's changing it a lot, but the basics are still there. You still have to give people a roof over their head. And, you know, a lot of this stuff is great technology, at least in the apartment business for the wealthy or the, the up and comers, the millennials. But what about the basic housing that people need that's clean and safe they're lucky to have a smartphone Mm. so in my world you know the smartphone has changed things a lot but Mm. you know it's all about socioeconomic status and most of my residents are not in that world Mm. so yeah technology's changed the way i live and you know the way things go and then people are getting evaluations that are absolutely insane with no cash flow and i say how does that make sense you know, how, how does a, a, a Tesla make be worth so much money when there's no profit there? Hmm. That just doesn't make sense when I think about pro- I'm just a basic guy. That's why I'm in real estate. I don't I can touch it. I understand. Hmm. I don't understand technology. I don't understand f- false valuations. Hmm. Maybe they're real. I'm just a false uh, onlooker. Hmm. You know, I just remember the dot com crash in 2000. It was like, hmm. Really? That's worth that much. Well, what do I know? Hmm. Even I think uh, cryptocurrency took a big hit at the beginning of this year. Yeah. You know, it was, it was like shooting up. Everyone was speculating, and it's like boom, and came came down. So, well, what's uh, it based on? As long as there's something backing it, yeah, then that's fine. Lease real estate. I know what the rents are. I studied in college the econo- history of economics because I didn't want to take a history class. So I took history of economics. Adam Smith. Mm-hmm. One of the most brilliant people in the world, the wealth of nations we read. And what's it about? All value is based on the scarcity of land, mm. the concept of scarcity. Right. So what's amazing about that is that you can actually look at what rents are to get a basic understanding, assuming those rents are affordable, mm-hmm. of what true value is. And if you can make a cash flow out of that, you're not going to get hurt. Mm. That's just the basic way I look at things. Right. Not a stock. It's not something, you know, I, I know what the rents are. It's easy to see. It's, mm. it's tangible. Investing in stocks and all these other things, is you can't measure mm. what the true income is. Mm. So anyway, that's my... Do you, what's your strategy on diversifying your investments and income? Well, I should more, but I love real estate and most of my <laughs> real estate because I believe that. Yeah. You know, I have stocks, I have bonds, I have cash, mm-hmm. but you know, I, I whatever is in liquid form, I let the the Wells Fargo guy handle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't even look at it. Yeah, I just I don't know what I don't know, and I'm not going to worry about it. Mm-hmm trust that the experts will do it. That's why people invest with me. They trust me. They don't worry about it. Hmm. I don't, you know, it's just the way it is. Awesome. And I know you're doing work to educate and provide resources for these um, under underprivileged families and, and people who are in these, these lower economic um, situations. So what can you tell us a little bit more about those and, and what you do and why you do it? Yeah, what we do is we have a clubhouse usually, which is really cool. So you can have people go and try to get them to go after a hard day's work to the YMCA, the church, the synagogue, whatever. They're tired, but you have a better shot at getting them to come to programming right at the doorstep Mm. where they live. Yeah. So that's the basics. So we have community gardens, get the kids involved and learn they grow their own vegetables, which is phenomenal. Some of them have never eaten their own food. They're in food deserts. you know what a food desert is? There's no Whole Foods within miles, basically, is a food desert. Mm. Um, so these are areas like that. And, you know, the cash flow is still good from these rents because we get paid, mm. you know, but we also can change their lives and make a difference. So by taking blight, making light, we build community through health. Mm. And that's pretty cool. After school programming, we're able to provide some, in conjunction with some government programs, we can provide them food. Uh, so some of them are just starving 
You know, they're just paying their rent or they're on Section 8 or whatever it is. They're still working hard. They have a full-time job. They just can't afford all the rent because they and they can't afford to feed themselves. Mm -hmm. So this is the real, real struggle. Yeah. And that's what we try to alleviate. Mm. The best we can, one apartment at a time. That's it. That's, that's right. That's right. Um, what's something that you're really excited about recently? Well, these opportunity zones are a very interesting concept, whereas the last tax reform actually did something good. <laughs> and that is you can take your gains and drop them into opportunity zones. And not just from real estate, you can take gains from anything. Hmm. I mean, you could sell your Facebook stock or Apple stock from many, many years, whereas it used to be you'd have to pay taxes on it. But if you invest in distressed communities, you actually can defer those taxes till 2026. Wow. You can actually, if you hold that investment with, a, with us, we're going to be starting as soon as it's clear, hold that investment 10 years. Let's say you've got a million dollar gain and you put it into an opportunity zone and then you sell it at 3 million bucks. If you hold that same investment for 10 years, not only did you defer your taxes till 2026, after 10 years, that $2 million profit on the million dollar investment you made, mm -hmm. God willing, tax free. Wow. It's going to revolutionize and change wow. the way distressed communities are looking. Because remember, there are only three states in this country, Massachusetts, New York, and California, that get 75% of all venture capital all fresh capital. That's it. Why? Why is it that the rest of the country is so starved from capital? Because that's where all the venture to smart money goes, right? Mm. Well, this is a way to take those gains and redeploy them into distressed communities. Mm. Mm. That is exciting. And it's hopefully going to change the world for a positive direction. Definitely. With people like you behind it, Eddie, it definitely will. Absolutely. Really? Love right. it. Love it. Love it. <laughs> um, and I'm, I'm curious, what's something in the last you know, couple of weeks or so that has, has moved you to the point where you like wanted to start crying? You just like felt so emotionally touched. You were, you were proud. You were moved. You were happy, sad, something like that. Well, my niece, who's like a daughter, got married on Saturday. Oh. And she married, she's Jewish. Mm -hmm. She married a non-Jew. Mm -hmm. They wanted a ceremony that had multiple denominations. So they had different people do different things. So I was the token Jew, mm -hmm. the big uncle. Mm -hmm. And I was honored to be able to give what's called the seven blessings. And I took her prayer shawl from her bat mitzvah. Mm -hmm. And I wrapped it around her and her new husband. And I said those blessings in front of everyone and that was one of the most moving times in my life how about that that's beautiful <laughs> i love it i love it um so it sounds like family is is super important to you why do you why do you think that family is so important for you well because i came from a broken one hmm. not that it was broken from divorce but broken from death hmm. and Yet I still have such an incredible tie and draw to my brothers and I did from my mother. And, you know, you just, she said that, um, I'll show you what she did. She says, you got five fingers, right? Mm -hmm. And she's number five. One day she's going to be gone. And then it's going to be that much harder for you four, meaning my three brothers and I, which thankfully they're all alive and well and happy to stay together. And so, you know, I didn't think that would happen so fast, but it did. So every, every moment counts with the ones that you still have and, Absolutely. and with the people, did you find that, do you, do you think that that impacted how you connect with people in general, that losing your, your parents at an early age made you want to connect with people because you valued life more, you appreciated connection more sure especially older people because i was i didn't have grandparents either no. so for me i love older people just because you learn so much from them and you know it's unfortunate our society is not like others where 
we all cast them away in homes and small little rooms. Mm. And it's sad because yeah. they should be celebrated and drawn upon for lots of wisdom. And so I, I just, I just see things so much differently than most. Yeah. Well, it, I believe it's, it's coming from a place of, of, pureness you have a purity there's the the society today in a lot of ways is very instant gratification micro microwave mentality and people don't want to invest the time and energy to to mine mine those hills for the gold so to speak even even for me you know when i was like 17 years old i i hated my parents i resented them i said you know leave me alone i'm i'm my own man i'm gonna do what i want when i want and you guys can't tell me nothing about it right and so that got me into in trouble. I hit hit rock bottom, you know, totally screwing my life up, getting into trouble, just not not being a good good person in in life. And I turned that around. And I started appreciating the the roots that I came from. I started appreciating everything that my parents had done for me. All the, all the gifts, all the you know gifts of of time, of energy, of of symbolism, of being able to raise me and my sister to be good human beings. Like I, I was so grateful for that, but I. I didn't see that. I didn't have that acknowledgement. I was totally ungrateful. I totally thought I did it all myself. And like that was that was one of the biggest turning points for me is to acknowledge where I came from and celebrate it and be grateful for it. And even just recently, I started actually diving into my dad's journey and past because I always thought he didn't want to talk about it. I always felt like we didn't have a, a good relationship and, and didn't really talk that much. But I started asking him about like, what was it like meeting my mom? What was it like, you know, like growing up and, and riding dirt bikes all the time? And there's, it was just like it created this really amazing bond and, and closeness with us that I'm so grateful for. That is great that you yeah. could do that, and you're still they're still alive for you to do it. Yeah, so that's awesome. You should be thankful. Yeah. yeah, and you are. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So you're doing this Musar. What other mm -hmm. personal development have, has made a big difference for you? My Bible is how to stop worrying and start living. Dale Carnegie is mm. my he's my god. <laughs> I think it's. Um, I just tend to be a worrier. Mm. It's good. You want to invest with someone who worries because they're going to watch over your capital and put you first. But mm. sometimes the worry doesn't bode for well for a great life on your own. So mm. anyway, you know, that's so, that's kind of the self-help. So I, I refer back to that often. Dale Carnegie. So I'm I'm more of the. Um free spirit not not warrior warrior <laughs> warrior <a> <laughs> yes not warrior <laughs> um so i was wondering do you have any feedback on what makes a difference for for those people like myself who are free spirits who it's important to be more attentive more cautious more almost have a little bit more paranoia <laughs> that's in our own good <laughs> well, i mean who there we go nurture versus nature i don't know if you can change that you are who you yeah. are and just got to pause and stop and try to focus. Like my yeah. wife's more like that. She, she has, it's frustrating to leave the house. You know, she's like, wait a minute, I got to make sure. Do I have my, this, do I have my purse? Where's my phone? Where's the charger? Do I have this? It used to be with the diaper bag and all this shit. <laughs> uh, it's just, it's who you are. As long as you know who you are and you can just take that pause and not rush, then mm -hmm. you probably won't make the mistakes that you're prone to make. Mm -hmm. Be more present. What do you do to be present in your life? Well, I just stop and I look around and I look at the sky. I look at the sunset. I look at my children, my dogs. And I just, the dogs are the best because they <laughs> totally, they totally make you happy and grounded. So much love. <laughs> no, and they don't talk back. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, daily routines. What are some of your daily routines that help you for success? I just try to work out every day until I can't. So that, you know, it's like people say, oh, I work out once or twice a week. Well, no, I try to work out every day. Yeah. And if I can't, I can't. I got to be somewhere at 7 a.m. I'm not going to work out at 530. I'm not that disciplined. <laughs> but I think if you know that every morning I need to do something, that keeps you focused, I think. Yeah. 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 That's the most important thing is getting all the angst, all the demons out by exercise. Mm, beautiful. So you Not do them, but most of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you do the exercise. Is there anything at night? Any kind of things that you do with your your wife to wind down or prepare for the next day? 
this is a clean show, right? <laughs> Explicit, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, we, yeah, well, we try to watch TV, try to wind down, try to relax, try to just let go yeah. and sleep as well as I can. But I love the dogs, love my wife, you know, just cuddle with the dogs to just ground me at night and just calm me down. I really love that. Mm. These two Labradoodles are very important in my life. I love it. I love it, man. So we're beginning to wrap up, Eddie, and we want to know what is the the final words of wisdom for for being, you know, perseverant for living an incredible life, no matter what kind of a uh, no matter what kind of cards you're dealt. It's just you know that you can't adjust the wind; you can only adjust the sails. I, I don't know what to say. Just it's just every day is a new day. You got to keep fighting and keep believing and. And just try to focus on being present, like you say, and you know, not get too crazy. And mm. realize we do, we are blessed. We have enough. We think we don't, but we do have enough. And there's more tomorrow. It's not a scarce world. And um, just gotta really believe in yourself and believe in your family and mm. let go. And if the shit hits the fan and you crash and burn you'll figure out how to pick up the pieces and start again that's right that's all it is awesome awesome eddie so i'm sure our audience is loving this interview loving your personality i'm, I'm sure some of them really do some of them are like oh my god eddie eddie <laughs> but Look, the people who, not everything you know that uh Zipa commercial is it not -uh, what's that <laughs> oh, that's the snoring machine uh -huh. New Yorker, he drives people crazy too. What can you do? He doesn't care. <laughs> so how do people stay connected with you? If they want to get connected with you, they want to have a conversation, they want to follow you on your journey. How do they do that? It's impacthousing.com is the best place to find me. And my whole story is there. You can find me on the internet. I try to stay up and write articles that are relevant to today's problems with homelessness and housing insecurity and food insecurity and that's it just impacthousing.com is where uh, you can find me awesome awesome eddie well thank you so much man i appreciate you i know our audience got a lot of value out of this and thank you for what you're doing in the world and for for these homelessness homeless communities and for people who are in low low income situations just thank you for for your heart and and showing up pleasure nice awesome to man awesome you have a great week and we'll talk to you soon Okay, bye-bye.